the uh, assistant professor of entomology in the plant science department, and I am uh, currently sitting in the Bayer Endowed Entomology Laboratory, which as it has been explained to me is not my lab, but is the JARC's lab, and if you want to work with insects, you are more than welcome to it. So uh, I consider my background to be primarily as a molecular agroecologist, and so I'm interested in ecological questions that are occurring within these agricultural systems. Um, nature loves balance, nature loves to hit a median, and has slight influences as things come in. And in agriculture, we are creating these fundamentally unbalanced systems. We are dumping water and nutrients into very narrowly defined spaces. We are controlling the plants that go into them. And as such, we wreak havoc on all these interesting ecological systems that normally find balances. So my interest is in, when we start manipulating these ecological variables, how does that impact the insects we see in these systems? And on top of that, how do those changes in insect ecology translate into uh, sort of agriculturally relevant variables for growers. So just to give a little bit of my background, uh, I came here two years ago, did my PhD at Ohio State working on soybean aphid. And this was a system where we were really interested in how does soybean aphids, uh, a species that is just completely genetically depauperate, has virtually uh, no genetic variability to speak of, but every time we roll out a new resistant variety of plant, these guys, they snap up, they have some sort of resistance almost immediately to these varieties. And so we did a lot of work looking at what are the genetic mechanisms, population genetics approaches, did some genomics, um, sort of a GWAS approaches to look at what are the regions of the genome that are uh, associated with these adaptations, and also a lot of field work seeing how can we manipulate field conditions to slow down the rate of evolution in these populations. And we came out with some nice work, got a, a really pleased we got a genome out of this and some, some nice work, and then I got the offer to come here to Fresno State and realize, oh, there's no soybean, there's no soybean aphids, and nobody uses resistant plant varieties <laughs> for the most part. So it's kind of this like, uh, this is a pivot moment. Where do we move? Uh, with this type of work. And so what I'm really trying to do is find some ways to integrate these molecular tools and techniques, these ecological questions, into ways that can really be useful to the growers in the San Joaquin Valley. So one of these tools that we're working on, this is a project that I'm collaborating with uh, Dr. Kent Dana at uh, UC Kearney. I have a graduate student, Rohit Balchi, working on this. We're looking to develop a diagnostic PCR test of Lepidopter and silk moths that feed on tree nuts. So the problem here is basically that we have a wide variety, about eight or nine different moth species that feed on almonds and pistachios. And when they are very young, they're virtually indistinguishable from one another, even with microscopy. So the techniques people use to identify them is you put them in a Tupperware container with some almonds, you let them grow for a couple weeks until they're big enough to identify. Now, this is not useful if you're trying to make a management decision. Do I have an outbreak of navel orange worm, which is a huge problem, or do I have some beet army worms that flew in uh, just randomly and aren't gonna be a problem? So what we're generating is a PCR-based test in which you have species-specific primers that generate different size DNA bands depending on what species you have. Just a really nice and simple multiplex approach. For example, we have a nice navel orange worm which produces right around the 500 bar, versus our Indian mule moth, which produces right around the 75 base pair mark. So a simple test. Uh, moving beyond that, I'm really interested in navel orange worm. This is an interesting species. It's kind of a, what we call a garbage moth. It likes to feed on a lot of things, almonds, pistachios, citrus, uh, pomegranates. And it has this really annoying habit of laying its eggs on the outside of the nut. The larvae burrow in feed on the nut meat directly, leave behind a lot of frass, which is insect crap, um, webbing, uh, you get fungal growth on it, all sorts of problems. Arguably the most significant insect pest of almonds and pistachios in the Central Valley. So what we're interested in is, uh, because almond and pistachio acreages increase so much, we're seeing a lot more spraying, we're seeing incidents of insecticide resistance, and this raises lots of interesting population level questions. If we get insecticide resistance down in Bakersfield, do people up in Chico need to worry about this? You know, is there enough movement of these moths? Are these genes going to flow? Uh, do people in almonds or versus pistachios need to worry? How much movement do we have between crops? 
So we're doing a real introductory work looking at sort of population genetics of the species, trying to figure out how much migration is there. Does migration move over geospace or does it move across crops? Uh, does that matter? Also, how do populations change over the course of the season? So is there a spatial dynamic to how these, or a temporal dynamic to how these species change? And so uh, this is really preliminary. We were collaborating with uh, Chuck Burks over at USDA Partlier. He collected some lovely moth heads for us. And uh, we are in the process of extracting DNA and generating markers uh, using the navel orange worm genome. And then finally, um, collaborating on a project with a team out of uh, Wisconsin looking at Ligus bug. So Ligus bug is a um, major pest in a lot of row crops around uh, the Central Valley. These guys have a nasty habit of feeding on flowers, which causes flower drop, nut loss, um, bowl loss in cotton, all sorts of things like this. And uh, essentially the only effective tool we have is insecticides. So when we're looking at systems like seed production, where we, uh, so for example, in seed production of alfalfa, in regular alfalfa fields, since we're cutting seven, eight times a season, you're losing the crop, you're managing the ligus that way, but in seed production, where you let the plant go through its entire life cycle, basically you're spraying seven to eight times a season for ligus bug. So we're doing some work looking at how the population is changing genetically from the beginning of the season pre-spray to the end of the season, looking for buildup of insecticide resistance. So, yeah, that's our general trend. So that being said, uh, a lot of my work right now is sort of building up these genetic data sets. Once you have a lot of these genetic tools in place, you can really expand them out. Uh, so. I would be, I think there's plenty of opportunities for work, uh, whether that is on a genetic capacity. I'd also be more than happy to talk to anybody who's interested in integrating insect questions into their research as well. All right, thank you.